Welcome to another OCD Recovery Instagram Live. I'm going to be talking a little bit today about the OCD recovery journey and well, something that I talk about on here all the time, the OCD recovery journey basically, but I'm going to be talking about it in a lot more detail in relation to the pain and the suffering because it's easy when you come on here and you watch these or you watch any uh, people who have recovered or sort of inspirational stories of any journey through an illness or something. And hay fever, not as bad as when I used to have it when I had OCD, but that's another story. When I, had, when I was really struggling, I used to get horrendous hay fever. Uh, used to just, uh, it, 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 was, it, was, it was so bad that whenever I used to go away, I used to think to myself, is there, where would I prefer, which country would be the best to go to on holiday that has the lowest pollen count? Uh, and it got to the extent where I just didn't even want to open the windows. So that, that's, what, that's what basically happened with it. I got, I, I got, so, I got so stuck with uh, the physical symptoms because they were so consuming that, uh, that it, just, it just got to a point where I was getting new physical symptoms every day. Like every day there was something new and some new thing that I didn't know about. And it's difficult when you've got a lot of these things that mimic real health situations. You get worried, you get concerned, you think, God, this is, this is, the, the, worst, this is the worst one, this is something real. And of course, when you're back in health, you're trying to navigate which ones are something you should go to the doctor with and which ones you shouldn't. It's a difficult road. It's hard to work that all out. Um, now, what I wanted to talk about today was the recovery journey and, and the struggle. Because when you're out of it, it's very hard to remember exactly what it felt like, that all-consuming nature where it completely locks on and grips. And that's what I was stuck in for a very, very long time. Uh, I was completely stuck in that because it was a situation where I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get out of it on before I learned to before I got better before I learned to recover it was very very hard for me to get out of that situation so I I couldn't get pretty much any release people talk about oh how could chronic anxiety be chronic all the time how could it be chronic all of the time well it was it was always there to some degree, clinging, latched in the background, not releasing. That was the nature. That's what it did. It did that. It was that all-consuming, that completely consuming nature. That's what it was like. And because that was like that for so long, you, you lost hope very quickly. You thought, how the hell am I going to get out of this? I don't get any breathing space at all. Physical symptoms, chronic guilt, chronic anxiety. Now, my background in life wasn't a background where uh, my life wasn't exciting. I, you know, I was very lucky to be in a position where I was living a great life, and I and I had and I was and I was very happy with my life all, all through my life. Uh, obviously, of the natural ups and downs, but I didn't. OCD was like this thing that I just felt like, God, this was the unluckiest card I could have ever been dealt because now this is going to invade and destroy and take everything away from me. Every time I travelled, it was coming in twice as strong. Every time I got invited to something I wanted to go to, it was twice as strong. And I thought, how unlucky I am to have this thing, you know? And it was it was a thing like that, that it because of how consuming it was, it's easy now to forget that consuming nature, that crushing tiredness where you're battling so hard in your head 24 seven. So that when you're doing that, because you've been battling so hard in your head, that what happens is you get to a position where you, you, you just, you find it very hard to, to even have any energy to do anything. Like in the afternoon, you're so exhausted, you're so tired. You, 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 I mean, look, by the time I got up at about nine or 10, I was dead by about half past 12. I was completely exhausted. I didn't have any energy at all. Uh, and most of the nights out, I was going, I was trying to drink a lot more than usual to escape those feelings. Wasn't, wasn't in a position of being an alcoholic and I wasn't in a position of it looked like I was drinking far more than most people. But when I was out, I wanted to really uh, make sure I 
enjoyed those nights because I wanted those great nights. I knew they weren't going to last forever because I was only going to be young once. I was always trying, always trying to make sure to get the most out of them, to get the best times out of those moments. And so that's, that's what, that was then obviously its ammunition. It knew that I was trying to do that. It knew that I was trying to get that. So it doubled that up and it went in extra hard on that. So that's what it will do. It's sneaky like that. It does that. And I had no idea of how to treat it or what to do. So I was completely stuck. Now, when I look back and I think about those times with OCD and how bad that was, I think of it as the paving stones, these bricks to build, laying the road to recovery. And I certainly didn't think that when I was stuck. When I was stuck, it was sort of that 24 seven existence, like trying to exist rather than live. There wasn't so much, it was all right. On the outside, it looked like I was having a great life, but on the inside, I was really stuck. So people wouldn't know, people who've known me for years, they used to say, oh, Rob, when you were on holiday with us, you know, you seemed right. And I was like, well, that was actually one of the worst times of my life at that point, but no one would have any idea. So it's very different to now. Uh, and it's, it's looking back that every second you wake up in the morning, you've got that first second in the morning where you wake up. And in that split second that you wake up in the morning, you, you notice that it comes in 100 miles an hour. Uh, and it's trying to get you. It's trying to get in there. That first, first position in the morning, it does that. Uh, and I always used to be like, oh my God, just if I can just break this cycle in that first second, then I'll be better, which was a load of crap because that's the worst time to try and break the cycle in the first second of the morning. Because trying to do that is pretty much impossible because you're, you're trying to fight it at the time it's coming in the most. And you, it's not about that. It's about allowing it to come in, not trying to fight it, not trying to get rid of it, not trying to force it away, which was exactly the thing that I was doing that was wrong all the time, trying to force, trying to get rid of, trying to force, trying to get rid of, which is what was keeping me stuck the whole time because I was doing that so hard. Um, so the OCD recovery journey it is a journey that you've got to look at as this is going to be a process that I'm going through for my life that's going to empower my life. Today, all the work that I do and everything that I'm planning on doing comes from that journey, right? But if I wasn't working with OCD, it would be empowering my life in another area because that's what I'm all about. I'm all about getting the most out of life. I view our life as most people are sort of not even woken up to how short it is and not woken up to this all eternity, this blink of an eye, bang. So we've got to bloody go for it. And that's what I'm like. And I am that sort of, you know, uh, intense going for it kind of character because that's how I like to, to, to live and I enjoy that and I enjoy the ride of it all and uh, that's how I want to be. I try and go out with a bang, really going for it and that's the attitude I've always had. Uh, but no, that was, well, I had it, that attitude. I didn't have it with OCD because I was locked up in compulsions. I was trying to stay safe. I was trying to avoid all the anxiety. I was trying to avoid all the sensations. I was staying stuck. I, would, I, I was doing a lot of things that I shouldn't do. So it wasn't like that. I had that go for it kind of attitude, that drive. But there was a lot of times that was wavering because I used to think, you know, I'd have traded anything for getting rid of OCD. Uh, if you'd said to me, trade everything, even your arms for OCD. I'd have given them on some days. I would have given them in a heartbeat. If someone said you can trade your arms for OCD, I would have given them in a heartbeat, right? Because I just wanted that peace. If I thought if you couldn't have peace, you couldn't sit on the couch and just relax even for a second. What kind of life do you have? That's what I used to think. That's how I was viewing it. And I was trying to grab back days and hours of life. So if someone invited me on holiday, I was like, how anxious am I today? Have I got one good day on holiday back? Right, that's two good days, three good days, four good days, five days, trying to sort of bank all these days. And that was a disaster because that was like a controlling pattern to try and get everything controlled so that I couldn't be stuck, that I, I got back my life and I would not lose any more days to the so-called lost years, which I was so frustrated about OCD sort of taking so much from me that I was so concerned about losing more years. So I was desperate to not lose any more time, which was a disaster. Again, I had to accept all of that and be at peace with that. It's very hot here today. Um, now, that would be another sensation that I would have felt in the past with OCD. Oh, it's too hot. Maybe I'll get dizzy. Maybe I'll pass out. Maybe everything's going to, your health's going to decline. Uh, you know, every single thing that it could get into, uh, it would go for. That's what it did. That was the nature of it. 
And so at one point I was like, you know, the recovery journey is tons of stages, tons of shifts in perception that happened everywhere. Some of them happened reading a book. Some of them happened on the computer. Some of them happened disputing irrational beliefs in paper. Some of them happened when I was standing at a nightclub bar, just looking at looking at life and thinking about things. Some of them were happened at a concert. Some of them happened uh, when I was in a car going down the road. Some of them happened at any in the sea. Some of them happened at every situation where I was thinking about life and sort of looking looking at life philosophies and changing things. But one of the biggest shifts, the biggest, came on the worst day when I was feeling like this is shit, this couldn't get any fucking worse. This is the language I was saying in my head. I was saying this couldn't be any fucking worse. This is the worst I've had. This is as bad as it can get. Nothing can get worse. And then I said, you know what this is? Really bad at the moment. And you know what this is? As bad as it can feel right now. So this is it. This is it. What are you afraid of? What can't you go and have? What can't you do with these feelings? What's, can it throw at you any more? I'm not doing any more compulsions. I am doing whatever it takes. That attitude where I was so fed up because compulsions can go on for years. Some people do them for 25 years. I was like, no, I want to now, I want to change this. I want to get rid of these compulsions. I want to go for this recovery. This has got to be the way. This is the only way. And, and I realized that and I saw that and I thought, okay, now we've got to work on recovery, really properly go for it. And we've got to, you, nothing as scary as the illusion. This is all illusions. I was reading a lot of philosophy at the time, a lot of stoicism at the time. And I started, uh, and I started to think, you know, I've got to break through this. There are people who aren't scared. There's people in hospital beds. There's people on death row that aren't scared. Why am I so damn scared? And that's where I started to break through those things and make real shifts. And that was about everything in my life. You know, my whole life changed like that. My whole life is based on the philosophies I live. I try and live how I want to live, how I dream to live in my mind. I try and live. So if I, if anything that I do not like, anything I think that I really want to improve, I'm thinking, how can I do that? Anything I want to do, I'm thinking, oh, you've only got a short time. Try and do that. Try and make that possible. Anything, anything that I can think would make a better life, I'm trying to implement. And I advise for everyone to implement in whichever way they're trying to do things, in whatever career, whatever relationship, whatever life struggle, how can they change it? Why can't they change it? Why can't they do it? And doing that, and that was key. And a lot of it meant going against what society follows and does and all this stuff because society is sort of bonkers most of the time they will follow each other even if it's leading down the wrong path so i had to break away from a lot of that look at lots of those rigid beliefs and breaking away from so many of the ideas that society held so rigidly that were sort of detrimental to their own happiness i had to break down and really look at it and when you were looking at greek and roman philosophy and reading you learn so much you see god the things that they saw the problems four or five thousand years ago the same problems today are the exact same situations thousands and thousands of years later the same problems because humans follow the same patterns so that was key and this was all key and people don't realize how important philosophy is you're not going to break chron change chronic ocd in five cbt sessions that uh, is, is, is was often the recommended sort of five cbt sessions no way of course if you're doing lots of sessions and you're working and changing and shifting you'll make change but you're not going to do it in that that time it's ridiculous any of these quick fix ideas some intensive ocd course for a week forget it you're not going to do that you're not going to break a chronic pattern that you've been in for years in suddenly three or four days it doesn't happen you don't even break those patterns in the gym if you're trying to do some new workout routine they don't become sort of embodied and feel like your new life you know the brain has sort of memories and everything if i go back to working out as much as i used to when i was in a health and fitness business and i used to own a gym i i felt so alive and plugged in physically like electrically and energy from all the working out but then i felt shit in my mind from ocd but if i started working out like that again my brain would remember all those sensations and feelings all attached to that way of existing in the past but with ocd now those were loads of patterns loads of changes things i had to break down day after day after day after day to get to the point where i am now so it is a life overhaul. It's a life overhaul. When I say to people, listen, you've got to start walking half an hour a day. You've got to start uh, going out and socializing a bit more. And they say, oh, this isn't going to break the OCD cycle. It is because it's these little points that all add up to form the healthy life structure that creates the framework to recovery. It's that whole package. It's that whole life overhaul. That's what we're about. We're about life overhaul, changing and shifting perspectives, getting into the core fears, looking at everything to get rid of 
chronic guilt and chronic anxiety. That means none of that lingering in the background. I'm not talking about a coasting phase recovery, easy to get into and part of the journey and necessary part of the journey. But I'm talking about getting fully under those emotions that are clinging on for dear life day upon day, every minute of the day. We're talking about getting under that. It's a fully recover full recovery it's not some idea that i've made up with some made up some concept it's reality recovery by definition has to be absence of chronic anxiety absence of chronic guilt that's what it is it's nothing else than that there's no things that you hear online people say well my idea of recovery is this no it's a definition thing it's a definition it's a fact recovery is the absence of chronic anxiety and chronic guilt and whatever other uncomfortable sensation that OCD is trying to attach to. That has to be the definition. Can't be anything other than that. Um, so that's key. And then people say, well, what if I can't do that? If you've got a brain and if you're a human being and you can learn to shift those beliefs, that's all there is fueling it. There is no treatment resistant OCD. It doesn't exist. Saying we're all scared, it doesn't exist. I've never seen a case. And if it, was, if it wasn't possible to do this, the book like Albert Ellis's Stubbornly Refuse to Make Yourself Miserable About Anything would be called Stubbornly Refuse to Make Yourself Miserable About Most Things Apart From One Thing and then you stay chronically guilty and anxious the rest of your life. And that's not how it works. Because when you get under there, you won't disturb yourself. I don't have any setbacks. I don't have any chronic anxiety latch for day after day after day. But I did for many a year, uh, in and out, waxing and waning because there was still not there with the unconditional self, life and other acceptance, which once I grasped, not firmly, but had a good understanding of it, the framework for OCD to operate there was no longer there. It couldn't grip relentlessly like it had previously for so damn long. So, yeah. That is an optimistic speech about the recovery process and from the depths. It's not, it's not, oh, you're worse than anyone else, because you're not. You're definitely not worse than anyone else. Chronic guilt, chronic anxiety, real event, real harm OCD, uh, every single thing you can think of, POCD, ROCD, not one uh, relentlessly harder than the other, although real event and harm OCD can often feel more disabling at times. Uh, it, they, they're all, they can all latch and make be worse for people. You know, some people are suicidal over ROCD, some people are suicidal over POCD, it doesn't matter, it's about the beliefs and the perspectives that you hold about those things. Am I writing a book? Yes. Is it taking me a long time? Yes. Accumulations of those little things that gradually pave the way to recovery. Johara, that is absolutely right. Those are the keys. You've got to break all these things down. You've got to do it. You've got to live it. You've got to make this your lived experience, your life, you're embodying it. This isn't some quick fix, life change. Just do this, read this book, and then you're better. You've got to embody this stuff. You've got to live it. You've got to be it 24-7. Look, I'm working with people, thousands of people with OCD all over the world. That if, if I had to, if running away from OCD thoughts and not hearing OCD stories was the way to recovery, how the hell would I do my job? I'm hearing the worst stories every day. I'm around OCD 24-7, seven, seven days a week. I, if, if OCD was something that you had to escape and run away from to recover, how the hell would I do the job? I couldn't. So it's obviously when you're around it, you don't have to be around it as much as me by any means, it loses its grip because the grip is the fear illusion because you're scared. But once you put yourself around it more and more and more, life changes. And that's what we're going to be doing with OCD, anxiety, generalized anxiety disorder, PTSD, on everything as we try and change anxiety in general, which is what we're working on. And that's what we're doing every day. And it's fun and it's an exciting ride. And all of that came from those hard shit times. That's where the journey came from. Um, I hope that gave you guys some inspiration today. Um, and I'll be doing lots more of these videos on sort of hope topics and so on and be covering all of that stuff on here because that is what it's about. More hope uh, helps for recovery. Being hopeless doesn't doesn't do much. Uh, it leaves you stuck, completely feeling like I'm the worst case. I'm never going to get out of this. I'm going to be stuck forever and so on and so on. And that is why I stayed stuck forever for so long, for so many of those prime, uh, the early years, because I didn't think I could ever get better. I didn't think I could ever recover. I thought I was completely stuck like this forever and would never get out of it. Nobody understood it. And everywhere I went to, look, I know that OCD, insomnia, all these disorders are the same they were 10 years ago in so many cases. If I just type in now how to recover from insomnia, the first article that comes up is a medical website and it talks about, okay, you've got to get your bedroom nice and quiet, you've got to have a nice cool temperature, you've got to get into bed early. That's a disaster that's setting up a whole structure to fight 
insomnia. And that's why you don't recover. It's about learning to accept it, any symptom, any feeling, whatever it is, no matter how important the day is the next day, whatever. That's how you recover. And that's what's key to recovery. But it's like that. And the same as all the thoughts of thoughts stuff. That's what you find most of the time on the internet. It doesn't cut it. In some cases, yes. In lots of mild cases, yes. And in some chronic cases, but not all. Usually not all. For me, no way would it cut it. It was just relentlessly in the background. You've done something that's so bad. You can't be forgiven. Da, 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 all the time. That's what it did. So that's the world you're living in. You've got to change it. You've got to go out there hopeful. You've got to go out there and feel inspired and go and get yourself better. Out there, there's so much content, helpful, and so much that's the same as it always was. You know, if I was trying to recover with the insomnia advice on the first three pages of Google, I wouldn't stand a chance. So much of it is just stuff that led to me being stuck, trying to get everything perfect to sleep. The difference between people who've got insomnia and haven't, the ones with insomnia are usually learning every trick to sleep, and the ones that haven't are doing nothing. And it's because you've learned to be scared of not be of, of uh, of not sleeping and then doing everything to not be to not be stuck and uh, we do a lot we're going to be doing a lot more videos on sleep related anxiety and insomnia because it's so much of a problem it's so key guys great to see you and inspire you today towards recovery and you can do this let's go and get it let's go and do it let's make those changes to recover guys i will see you on the next instagram live take it easy